there's a new show called The Masked Singer, and the minute I saw an ad for it, I thought, this show is going to be huge. In each episode, famous people sing in head-to-toe costumes. The show gives you clues about who they might be, and at the end of each week, one singer is unmasked. It's this fun guessing game that leaves you going, oh, I know that voice. Now, sure enough, the ratings have been great, and it got me wondering why people are so hooked on this show from a scientific perspective. When the audience is chanting, you know, like, who are you, or take the mask off, your heart does beat a little bit to see if all the guesses are right. And then if you're taken for a swerve, you're like, wow, did this really happen and why? It's very addicting. Do you know whose voice that is? It's comedian Ken Jeong. I'm so freaking confused right now. I don't know who I am. He's a panelist on the show. He also happens to be a trained physician, so he's no stranger to the world of science. I told him over Skype my hypothesis for why the show is so compelling. So I first got really interested in, in thinking about this because it immediately puts you into that like, I guess what you call like a tip of the tongue state, where you're like, oh, I recognize that voice, but I can't quite figure out what it is. And the thing that I think is so interesting about that is that that's not actually like a pleasant feeling. And yet it's also, like you said, this almost addicting feeling. I was like, I want to figure out why our brains love being tortured in this way. I, I think you're right. There is something addictive about, it's almost like visual nicotine, maybe, but in a pleasant way, in a pleasant way. There's no consequences except just, you know, harmless entertainment. I, I think that's part of TV magic. I sent clips of The Masked Singer to a psychology professor at Columbia University. Oh, wow. <laughs> and first of all, she thought it was totally fascinating, but can I tell you about what she said? Please, please, I'm, I'm so curious. That psychology professor is Dr. Janet Metcalf. She's done research on the tip of the tongue state and thought a lot about why something so painful can also be so pleasant. I think it's almost like a state of craving where you know there's a reward at the end and the reward's beckoning. If you weren't anticipating a reward, it would just be miserable. But you're, you know that if you stick with it, you very likely will come up with the answer and that it'll be really fun. What is happening in our bodies, in our brains, when we get the right answer? The brain activations that correspond both to the build-up to the right answer and the answer are associated with, people call it the dopamine system. Dopamine is the neurotransmitter that's closest to drugs like cocaine. Huh. And presumably, if you were able to put people in the scanner watching The mass Singer, I would bet on the, this same system being activated. I reported what I learned back to Ken Jeong. This, this really scientifically explains The mass Singer, which is fascinating, and, and I agree uh, a thousand percent. Yes, that means I'm doing my job well. <laughs> you are doing your job so well. The Science Magic Show. Science Magic That's Show. That's what you do. Exactly. That's what you do. Listen, folks, this is my show, and I get to decide which compliments I leave in the video. Okay, one final question. Do you think that the Masked Singer is good for our brains? Um, <laughs> I'm the father of 11-year-old twin girls, all right? So even them, like, we will we'll make sure that they can watch a mass Singer after they've done their homework. We prioritize entertainment within our household. We, you know, I think my wife being a physician and still practicing, I think that's the ideal, you know, the principles that we have. I, I, I think it is a healthy decompression. I really, I really do. Now here's the cool thing. In theory, the benefits might even go beyond healthy decompression. Let's play a little trivia game. Who killed Alexander Hamilton? If you don't know who Hamilton was, do you really care who killed him? Probably not. Now what if you just saw the musical Hamilton, or you remember that old milk commercial, and you absolutely know who killed him? Are you dying for somebody to tell you the answer? Not really. But if you think you know the answer, but you're having trouble spitting out a name, you're gonna wanna Google it right away. Dr. Metcalf has done studies that show that the tip of the tongue state is often when people are at their most curious. And beyond that, 
we're more likely to remember the answer to a trivia question if we've been in a tip of the tongue state first. By the way, the answer here is Aaron Burr. Mm -hmm. It's beautifully connected to learning. Like the state itself is beautifully connected to learning. So if you were teaching kids, for example, you would love to have them be in this state all the time because they're gonna be little sponges. Is there a way to encourage that in students? Well, they did it pretty well in the TV show. What they did are things that we're looking at in the lab. They're giving hints, they're keeping your attention on it. You know, in part, the costumes are great and there's razzmatazz and music. But all of that just keeps your attention on the target, right? Right. So keeping your attention on, but giving, giving clues that make you think that you almost know it, even if, they, even if they're not really effective, even if they're illusory, will increase the chance that you're in that state. Huh. So yeah, you could do it. You could do it, or at least we think you can do it. We're trying. <laughs> Okay, now you might be saying to yourself, so fine, the show does a great job of piquing our curiosity, or maybe it's a good model for educators to follow, but surely like being curious about who's under the lion mask can't help me remember the Krebs cycle. And listen, I'm not saying that it can. But a few years ago, researchers at the University of California at Davis found that once a person's curiosity is aroused, they're better at remembering other unrelated information they were exposed to at the same time. So if you'll let me speculate wildly for a second, maybe being curious for one hour a week could help us improve our memories. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some television to watch. Science magic show, science magic show, science magic show.